that's why you must understand that as they move into the spot of our text, it is not with the jubilance that we have seen before. The dancing has gotten silent. Everything has gotten quiet because they are nearing Jerusalem and nobody except Jesus is sure what is going to happen next. Into this atmosphere, they are walking down the road from Jericho. I have been on the road to Jericho. It is a winding, dry, uh, arid atmosphere. And as you begin to go down the Jericho road, it is also a winding road. And as they come to a turn in the road, there over in the corner is blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus is one of the few people in the Bible that the Bible takes the luxury of giving us his name and his pedigree. Think with me for a moment that when we come to the woman at the well, all we know is that she is the woman at the well. When we find the woman with the issue of blood, all we know is that she is the woman with the issue of blood. But this particular young man, the Bible not only tells us that his name is Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, but it also gives the pedigree, the son of Timaeus. Now, whenever the Bible takes the luxury of giving you background, that is to let you know that this is a nobleman, perhaps some of means or wealth or influence. He should have been an heir, a leader of some sort, but he was blind Bartimaeus. Because of his condition, his name has been altered. His father's not blind Timaeus. The father was whole, but the son was lame. Have you ever had a child that didn't act like you <laughs> and you say for all I put in you for all I taught you and all I exposed you to how did you come out like this in the Bible days when they had a child they couldn't deal with they would ostracize them and set them aside blind Bartimaeus sat by the highway side begging he should have been a nobleman but because of one thing, it brought him down to nothingness. And now somebody's heir has become somebody's beggar. Can I take my time tonight? Blind Bartimaeus brings to us what the lack of vision will do in your life. It's not just that it puts out your eyes. It puts out your dreams. It puts out your potentials. It puts out your possibilities. But like anybody who has had something to deal with for a long time, you learn how to cope with what you don't have. I thought I would be married by now, but I'm not married. I thought I would be further along, but I didn't get further along. I thought things were going to turn out differently. Whenever you are handicapped in some area of your life, you learn coping tools to live with what didn't happen, what should have happened, what could have happened, what almost happened. Blind Bartimaeus has sat by the highway side. It is an interesting oxymoron that we see a blind man sitting on the side of the road where travelers are traveling. Blind Bartimaeus is sitting. Movement and stagnancy now collide with the blind man who sits by the highway. If it were not enough to be blind, he has to hear other people moving. What do you do when you keep hearing about other people doing better than you? It's not bad enough that you are behind. You have to hear about other people moving while you are stagnant. He sat while they moved. He sat while the chariots passed by. He sat while the hoof prints of horses moved. He sat 
while the mules were going down the road. He sat listening at people walk by. And I wonder in my mind if he thought, I wish I could be one of them. But I am stuck here on the side of the road begging. He was blind. There is no doubt about it. Not blurred. Blind. <laughs> Not limited. Blind. And he sat by the highway side begging. Because he was blind, he was broke. Because there is association with increase and vision. Don't think that you're going to lose your vision and keep your resources. God will not fund blindness. In fact, without a vision, the people perish. So there is some association between the begging and the blindness. In fact, wherever there is vision, there will be provision. But if there is no vision, there is no provision. So blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, is a beggar. His finances are a reflection of his blindness. The text spirals down in a cascading, barbaric reality of the consequences of the loss of vision. On the side of the highway, he sets and he begs and he's blind. And all of a sudden, it makes a U-turn by introducing one fight he heard. The hearing is a glimmer of hope. Even though he was blind in his eyes, he could still hear. That gets me excited because I want to stop and praise God that God won't let everything go wrong at the same time. I might not have what you have, but God still gave me something to work with. I might not be able to do what you can do, but I still got something to work with. I might be blind in one area, but I can still hear. Tell your neighbor, I can still hear. Now you must understand then that this hearing thing is an important thing because God will not use anything that you lost to bless you. I'm talking to somebody who had somebody walk out on you. I'm talking to somebody who, somebody walked out the door and said, you ain't going to never be nothing because I left. And you've been crying over what left you. But anything that left you, you don't need it. Because your miracle is never in what you lost. Your miracle is always in what you got left. The devil will always show you what you lost. But I came to tell you that God's going to take what you got left and your miracle is going to break forth out of what you got left behind. If you can't see, don't worry about it. Let the ears work because he heard. He heard, 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 he heard. Touch your neighbor and tell him I hear something. I hear something. I hear. I might not see nothing, but I hear something. I, 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 nothing came in the mail, but I, I hear something. Uh, the storms are still raging, but I hear something. The devil is still coming against me, but I heard something. I hear something, something different. I sense it in my spirit. I can't see it yet. I can't walk by sight. I got to walk by faith, but I hear Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Touch your name and tell him I hear something. I don't see nothing yet. I don't see how I'm going to make it. I don't see how I'm going to get into college. I don't see how I'm going to raise these children. I don't see how I'm going to buy this house. I don't see nothing yet. Oh, I can't walk my side. Oh, but I, oh, I hear it, 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 I hear it. Thank God for the preacher. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? Say they be sent. I hear something. That's why I came to church tonight. Because I hear something. I don't see nothing. 
Oh, yeah. I got off work early because I hear something. I ate in the car because I hear something. I did my hair in the rearview mirror because I hear something. Got dressed in the bathroom because I hear. Oh, don't fool with me. I feel my preacher coming up in here tonight. He heard! 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 He heard that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus was passing by. Tick, 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 He didn't hear that Jesus was coming. He didn't hear that Jesus was headed his way. He didn't hear that Jesus was coming to his house. He heard that Jesus was passing. If I'm passing by, I'm not coming to. That means that this is not about you. That means I got something else on my mind. It means that I'm looking in another direction. It means that I'm headed somewhere else. And if anything's going to happen, you can't wait on me to do it. You got to instigate a change. Because if you don't do nothing, nothing is going to happen. Jesus wasn't coming to him. He was passing by. Touch three people and tell them he's passing by. He's passing by. He's passing by. You can sit there and be cute if you want to, but he's passing by. You can sit there with your lips glued together if you like, but he's passing by. You can turn up your nose and act like you don't care, but he's passing by. You can be filled with pride if you want, but he's passing by. If you don't change your ways, you're going to die like you are. Jesus ain't coming. He's passing concern because while we are beating our tambourines he is passing by while we are trying to impress one another with our cute little dresses he is passing by while we're arguing over who's got the best choir and who's got the biggest church and who's got the deepest revelation Jesus is passing by while people are looking at you talking about she thinks she's something, Jesus is passing by. Some of us know that we're running out of time. That's why we don't care what you think. We don't care what we look like. We don't care whether you like us or not. We don't have time to worry about how you feel. Jesus is passing. Jesus is passing. Oh! He's passing by. He's passing by. Some of you recognize you're running out of time. When you were younger, you worried about what people thought about you. You wondered whether they were talking about you or not. But the older you get, the less you care what anybody said. I don't care what you say about me. I'm running out of time. Jesus is... Slap your neighbor and tell him he's passing by. If I get a chance for a breakthrough, I'm going to take it tonight. If I have to kick off my shoes, I'm going to get it tonight. If I have to shake down my hair, I'm going to get it tonight. If I have to dance in my bare feet, I'm going to get it. Jesus is... As Jesus begins to pass by, Blind Bartimaeus now recognizes what God sent me here to tell you. He recognizes that if he doesn't do anything, oh, y'all ain't going to handle this. God ain't going to do anything. I know that made you uncomfortable. I meant to shake you up. 
this is one of the miracles in the Bible that was predicated on the movement of a person before the movement of God. Another one was the woman with the issue of blood. If she didn't do anything, she was going to die in the condition she was in. If blind Bartimaeus didn't do anything, Jesus was passing by. Slap your neighbor and say, do something. You got to do something. You've been sitting there. You lost 10 years. You lost 20 years uh, waiting on something to happen. Uh, your hair is getting gray. Waiting on something to happen. Your back is getting stiff. Waiting on something to happen. You got to do something. Uh, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always be where you've always been. You got to do It is a praise under pressure. A praise under pressure. A praise that don't have much time. A praise that is desperate. A praise that says if I don't do anything, I will miss my opportunity. Must I remind you, this is Jesus' last walk. It's not like he's coming back down this road again. If he doesn't get it now, he may not get it at all. He wasn't on the program. He wasn't on the itinerary. He wasn't on the schedule. He wasn't in the clique. He wasn't in the club. He wasn't in the VIP section. If he didn't do something, not Jesus! Somebody holler, Jesus! Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you must understand, when he hollered, Jesus, he, you better holler. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the people say. I don't care what the lady looks like in front of you. I don't care how they roll their eyes at you. I don't care how uncomfortable they get. Every now and then you gotta get out of order and just holler, Jesus! This, this, this screaming, this hollering that he was doing was disruptive. It was out of order. It was loud. And the disciples thought it was unnecessary. So they charged him to hold his peace. The devil don't want you to say nothing. He wants you to sit there with your mouth shut and let him walk in and out of your house, in and out of your life. He wants you to sit there with your mouth shut while he takes your children, destroys your neighborhood, kills your integrity, and he don't want you to say nothing. He wants you to accept that this is all your life is going to be. And every time you try to say something, the devil say, you can make it with no money. You don't need to see no change in your life. Maybe it wasn't meant for you to have anybody to love you. It ain't so bad that you're sick. It could be worse. The 
devil keep trying to shut you up because now this is a war between vision and voice the enemy's taking your vision and now he wants to take your voice he wants you to get up and go to work and go to church and go home and get up and go to work and go to church and go home and get up and go to work and go to church and go home and get up and go to work and go to church and go home and get up and go to work and go to church and go home and get up and go to work and go to church and go home and every time you dare to dream or dare to think that your life could be different or dare to think that God has more for you the devil says Don't you dare believe this church can grow. Shh. You ought to just be satisfied to have it. Just be satisfied to be here. Just be satisfied to keep it like it was. Don't dream no big dreams. Just shh. Jesus! I don't know who I came here to preach to today, but the Lord sent me in this house today that says it's your time to disrupt some stuff. It's your time to get beside yourself. It's your time to get wild and reckless. It's your time to get on people's nerves. You've been trying to be nice. Didn't want to upset nobody. Didn't want to make no waves. But the Lord said, if you don't say nothing, he ain't going to do nothing. Every time you try to say something, the devil is trying to shut you up. What do you say to that? You gonna sit up in that house and let the roof leak? You gonna sit up in your neighborhood and let the devil take over your neighborhood? You mean you gonna sit up and let the devil have your husband, have your daughter, have your son, wreck your dreams, wreck your life? You ain't gonna say nothing! 